The DCU finally comes to an end with Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. Hey everyone, Joe here from Action. Welcome to our home media unboxing for the final installment of the DCU, The 15th film, the 16th project. It's all said and done. Well, it's been over since last year, but I'm a very, very slow person to get to these. Uh, here we have DC's Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom. Similar to The Flash, I was debating were we ever going to get this film. This film just had constant delays because of not even just of the quality of the film. It was just mainly that this film was in a very weird spot on where it was supposed to be on the DC board. This was going to be post-Flash where... It was going to basically be part of the new DCU. It was not the same DCU that Zack Schneider began, but it wasn't going to get rid of everyone. But then, like, okay, was Michael Keaton was going to be Batman? Was Ben Affleck was still going to be Batman? And then they were changing because, like, the positions change was going to be before the Flash, after the Flash. It was, it was in a we very weird, murky spot. And, again... We're not here to talk about the quality of the film, because that's a whole separate conversation for, an for another video, for another channel. But here, we're just here to talk about the final home year release for the DCEU series with this film. And honestly, I will say this much, I'm at least surprised they gave it a good effort. Is it the absolute best? Best? No, but I will give them at least some credence that, you know what, they actually did put a little bit of, like, actual care into the final DCU release. I, I'm actually a little bit surprised on that front, if I'm, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Not that like, this film wasn't bad, but I'm just saying that it being the end, and just how whole media is, I would just consider it just, you know... Slap on some posters, call it a day, and be done with it. But you know what? I'm at least, you know, in the whole whole media release for this film, I'm at least a little surprised they did do a little bit of variety. It's not all inclusive, it's not all there, but you know what? How this film turned out, I'm okay with the whole media release. I'm okay with that. But with all that said, let's dive into, no pun intended, to the whole media release of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So first things first, we have here the DVD cover for Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. It is just one of the standard posters, which includes the, I guess, the main three characters of the film, which is Aquaman himself, Orm, the former Ocean Master, and Black Manta, the villain of the film. And honestly, as terms of, you know, being simplistic, yeah, it's still kind of the floating body poster kind of, kind of thing. I'm not entirely down, down with this, um... With this idea, you know, just, again, keeping it simple, which I think this is the theme for this movie, just keeping things simple. We don't need to go crazy. We don't need to, like, overstuff the car the poster with uh, so many different things. You know, just let you know, okay, these are the three faces you need to get accustomed to. And that's about it. That's really all that has to be said and done to it. The actual logo itself, you know, obviously using the same text, the same logo, the same everything from the first movie. And just adding this additional and the Lost Kingdom. I will say this much, you know, just... It's a simplistic title, it's very broad, it's very stroke, and just, it kind of gives the wonder of, like, you know, this is just another adventure in Aquaman's little, little corner of the sea, of the, not the sea, the ocean. And honestly, again, you know, it's fine. It's a fine name, it's a fine title, it's a fine, it's a fine text font. I'll give it that. Like, yeah, I don't know what I was expecting with a film called Aquaman and the Lost King. I, I, I had no idea what that was going to even look like. Here's the side profile again, and on the back, you get to see some cool stuff from a lot of the other posters, a lot of the other promo shots from the film. You get to see Aquaman fighting Black Manta underwater, Atlanti, uh, Atlant, Atlantia, I believe that's, um, that's, um... Uh, damn, I'm forgetting the actress's name. She's the AMC spokesperson, basically, now. I completely forgot her name. I do. Uh, Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Um, Black Mantha kind of powering up, and then Orm in a uh, pretty successful shot in the movie. There is no bonus features. There is no director's commentary. There is nothing. You are spending full price of an hour's DVD just for the movie. So, just giving you a bit of heads up with that one over there. And on the inside, you just get the disc. No, no, no sleeve. Not even a digital code. I, I swear to God. Normally, I do not remove the digital codes when I do these unboxings, but there is no digital code. There, you get nothing. Uh, you just get the disc, which I will give them credit for. It's not your standard gray, regular print the, print the logo on and call it a day type of thing. They actually did put a little bit of color in it. It's the teal green and the Aquaman logo in a bigger font. And I, honestly, I, again, I'll give them a little credit that like, they put a little bit of effort in here. A little bit. Not too much, just a little bit, mind you. Now, going into the other formats for a second, we do have the Blu-ray release, which in cover-wise, it is using the traditional theatrical poster for it. The theatrical poster, again, same thing I'll say with the DVD. 
they're choosing very simple design. It's kind of more similar to the original Aquaman one main poster where in that in that one it was Arthur and Mera. In this one it is Arthur and Orm, which again symbolizes what the main kind of relationship is for the film. Again, this is a more of a more of a story about brothers, so it makes sense for those two to get the spotlight there. The special features, which we'll talk a little bit more about the 4K, the 4K and the Blu-ray all share the same fe special features, so that's where you're gonna you're gonna get most of it from. And obviously, of course. Blu-ray does look nicer. I get it. We, we're not gonna stress into that because I still buy DVDs in 2024. Going into 2025, we're not gonna go. We're not gonna stress too much into that. Then going into the 4K Ultra HD, the regular edition. This one, I will say, in terms of the poster they use, the the artwork, I think it hits hard. It's the still the three characters, but they're inside the actual. They're kind of like more morphed around the Aquaman symbol, and it's Arthur's using his new stealth suit, which. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Did they really need that? Did they really just try to like, you know, okay, you know what? The Aquaman 1 suit was, I think, perfect. You know, again, like bringing over comic adaptions, bringing it to the real screen. I think it was a perfect transition. I think they were just sequel itis. Like, we need kind of like a still a new costume for Arthur to have. And we they kind of found a reason to do it in the movie, but like it's just a darker blue shade of the traditional. Like the the body's still the same; it's just a different shade of color. I sometimes I like it, sometimes I hate it. I, I I'm, not, I'm 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 really mixed about it. Like it just you're gonna have to ask me a certain day of the week, and I'll give you my uh, an honest answer somewhere down the road. And then they actually do as a side thing. This isn't in, in, even in relation to the movie itself, 100% speaking. But they did release an Aquaman two pack. So if you're just a fan of the Aquaman movies, you can just buy the standard two pack, which there's one on DVD and one on Blu-ray, so you can own both movies in one collection in one sleeve. Honestly, I think that's a cool idea. I don't see them doing that much off. Than, than not just simplistically like that. I could be wrong though. We've had had more you know singular movies from DC nowadays. I know Marvel kind of does some you know three packs once in a you know in a while. But you know this was like a rare thing for like you know them to do it for Aquaman. And I'm like you know what that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll give them that. I'll give them that for that for that little cool treat that they gave us. You know again just for the minimalist collectors that like you don't want like any, a, a lot on your shelf you, you but you still want to own as much as you can it's a perfect buy for you. Now moving into the actual 4k steelbook this is the Walmart version because again like I said I think I'll, I'll say this a couple more times this year is that um, Best Buy no longer carries steelbooks officially they're not the provider anymore Walmart has picked up that license so this was the first and only DCU uh, movie to have a Walmart steelbook release and honestly cover wise it looks pretty freaking cool I Cannot lie. It's just like the ice skull background. Arthur in like that mid fighting position where like it kind of looks like he's giving up, but he's not really. And then him cracking in the Aquaman symbol in the eye. It looks so freaking cool. I'm gonna give them credit. Like this is a 10 out of 10 for me. This is like this is a cool shot right here. Um then going to the side profile again, similar to the other one. Again, it's just using more of the teal, the teal blue and a darker shade for the back. And on the back is just the ice aquaman symbol, which I'm going to be honest with you, considering how they designed this, it would have been cool for me, personally speaking, to like, why don't I have a version of it with Black Manta ready to fight Aquaman? And I'm just like, this was a little too easy. This was just a, a little bit too easy in my taste and preference for that one. Now, going to the inside of the Steelbook, I will give them credit. They did use both sides of the Steelbook. Um, is it absolutely the best thing they should have done no but i will give them credit there have been other recent steel books that i've reviewed that they did not utilize side d as i like to call it so i at least give them credit it does make sense <laughs> it really really does so i i will really, i will give them some props there again but it's it's not the best shot but you know what it makes sense for the steel book really it does make a little sense then going to the disc different shades again so this one's a bit more of a greenish one this is more gold uh more to symbolize aquaman's main color palette for his main suit so again we'll give them some credit the green is the blu-ray the 4k is the um the yellow um all the special features on the green just the movie on the on the yellow because that's how it works. That, that, that's just how it works in uh, in the home media biz. Then going to the J card, we have the limited edition steelbook. This one does not have the Walmart exclusivity. I, I believe that was on the Marvels, but not an Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So it could just be that they were trying to make a generic version for everywhere. So I'm like, you know what? That kind of works out um, pretty bad. It gives you a little sneak peek of the inside, which doesn't really have the crease in there. The logo and more of a uh, with, with more of a um, aqua ocean background. 
And on the side, it's, it's almost the same format as the DVD, except this time it comes with all the special features. This is included in the Blu-ray and the standard 4K edition, so this is more special features about Aquaman, the Lost Kingdom itself, um, about the fight scenes, about just more of the lore of the movie, and some, I believe, a couple deleted scenes, I believe. There's no director's commentary, there's nothing else special than that, but I will give them a little credit. They, they did throw more our way, you know, unlike, you know, Marvel and Disney Plus, where they have an avenue there to release the uh, Marvel's Assembled um, documentaries they do after every MCU project, D DC does not have their own, so I at least give them credit, like, they, they're they putting a little bit of, like, you know what, here's some, if you really want to know about the making of this movie without going too much into detail, this is for you. So, with that being said, what um, back to what I was saying in the beginning, Aquaman the Lost Kingdom's whole media release, I think, uh, this, despite everything Warner Brothers had against this movie, into the, again, they were just, 2023 was just a burn-off year for DC, you know what, we admit, we made some movies, they were made, some were good, some were meh. This and Beetle, Blue Beetle were being the good ones, Flash and, and Shazam 2 being more on the meh side. Again, all up to opinions, I will say that much, but for this one specifically, in terms of its whole media release, Again, I will give Warner Brothers at least some respect <clears throat> for putting a little bit, little bit of effort in here. The DVD itself, again, very simplistic, very basic. I think it fits the fit feel for a DVD. Is it worth the, the full price? No, um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I again, it's it, most of my opinions on, on DVDs nowadays when it comes to just these movie only things. I do understand you're buying the ticket in home and you are owning this movies forever. However, at the same time, I don't see in this current economy i don't see the justification of owning this movie for twenty dollars on dvd would that, that's basically it. again i understand things have changed since 20 years ago but again you're still putting the same amount of money and i just i don't see the, the value in return there so i definitely would recommend for the dvd to purchase at a cheaper price point um, at least with the blu-ray edition and then the, the regular 4k edition at least with those you are getting the higher quality you are getting the special features so for for me i i find that to be worth worth the money on that front and i do like the blu-ray um i do i especially like that original 4k really if i if i was a 4k collector i would be very happy to get that into my collection in my opinion so i think both of them are worth the price point that they are again i do appreciate them putting out the Aquaman 2 movie um, pack, I, I think it's a great way to, like, you know, incentivize more people to, like, you can buy two movies for the price of one, and they are good movies. Um, to talk a little bit about this movie in its quality, for me, I think it was good. And I think, you know, having that price point of having an affordable cost for two great movies, okay, not great movies, two good movies, two great movies, then I will say that it does justify the cost. So I will, get, and especially you have a, just the generic DVD and Blu-ray, it's enough, it's enough an entry point um, to get people familiar with the character until whenever James Gunn decides to reboot the character in the DCU in the future. Now into the Steelbook side of things, I think it's really, really great. I think the cover art alone is just like, damn. That's a chef kiss right there. That's like, f f frack yeah. That's, I'm trying not to curse here, but my like, hell yeah. That's like really, really cool. I really dig it. When they announced this, when they released this I'm, uh, in, the, in the first promo art, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, that definitely I need to buy it. If I even wasn't doing the, 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 the these unboxings, I would still buy this because it just looks so freaking cool. It just really does. It looks so dynamic. It looks so great. Side B just being the, the plain logo, plain, the plain emblem. I'm a little disappointed by that. I think they, they had a really great opportunity there to like, you know, put a Black Manta kind of like, you know, to sell the Aquaman versus Black Manta uh, moment in the film. But again, that was just a missed opportunity. But I, they did make up for it a little bit by utilizing Side D on the inside, which some other steelbooks don't get to do that. So in terms, in my recommendation, when it comes to owning Aquaman Forever on physical media, the second one at least, I would say if you have the money, the Steelbook is the way to go. I think it's the most presentable, it's the most beautiful, and definitely it is a very uh, cool promo art of the, of the last time we will see Jason Momoa's Aquaman. If you are on the cheaper side, I, I the DVD, I would say wait for a big sale, wait till it's like five to ten bucks. That's just my personal opinion on it. And but if you do have a couple of extra bucks to spend, definitely go for the regular 4K edition. I think that one's going to look the best. And again, it just depends on what um, device you have already. If you have a Blu-ray player. Or DVD player, 4K player, it just depends. But in all honesty, if you have them all, if you have the ability, definitely go for the Steelbook. But the regular 4K edition is an, is an also a must buy. So with that being said, let me know down below which copy of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom did you purchase into your collection. I would love to hear it down below. I would love to have a conversation with you about it. Uh, but with that all being said, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to us here on the Collection Compass for more videos such as this one. Please like, share, share if you want to. Ring the bell and follow us on social media. But until we see each other again, 
Stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.